Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Dammit Jim's Gun Info. As you see before you today, I'm going to be talking about the AK-47 weapon platform. The one you see in front of you is a Wasser 1063, it's a 7.62 by 39 Russian. As you can see, uh, it's got a lot of different updates than would come with your standard AK-47. So I'll talk about them all briefly here in a moment. As you can see also I have several different magazines that are up here. So your standard, your standard AK-47 will end up taking 30 round magazines. Now on average they will end up probably being metal like this without a rib or metal like this one with a rib. There's different aftermarket polymer manufacturers such as Magpul and Promag. Promag made these over here. These are neat because this is a 40 round magazine and as you can see it's got metal reinforced lips and a metal clip right here so that you can lock that into your weapon. This one is 100% polymer except for the spring and the base plate. Uh, and as you can see, you can see how much ammunition that you actually have loaded inside the magazine. So it's really a uh, nice option to have. Over here on the far left, we have a 75 round drum magazine. As you can see right here, flip these two latches and it hinges down off of this lip and as you can see I have it loaded up with 75 rounds of hollow point ammunition it was 124 grain um, wolf ammunition by the way um, you push this button to release the spring tension whenever you close everything back up you can store these indefinitely because the spring is not wound then just get that over that little lip flip these little latches back and it has the metal accessories there to lock it into your firearm. To activate it or to wind up and put the spring under tension, you just turn this knob for, uh, four full turns or eight half turns and your magazine drum is ready to go. And it comes with a nice carry bag that you can show, throw over your shoulder. Now, moving on to the weapon in front of us, we have, like I said, again, the Wasser 1063 and 7.62 by 39. I've made diff uh, multiple different upgrades to this weapon to make it more uh, the way I wanted it to be. The AK is not quite as versatile as the AR-15 platform when it comes to modifications um, because just the way the AR-15 is designed, it has just way more modularity than the AK-47 platform. To change the caliber of a AR-15, I would end up popping two pins, take the upper receiver off, put a new one on, push the two pins again, and ready to go. The AK-47, you would have to rebarrel the weapon completely to whatever new caliber you wanted, unless you had some sort of conversion kit. So, let's begin uh, at the top. As you can see here, we have a Midwest Industries rail system that has a burst fast fire red dot mounted on it. It is co-witnessed with the sights so that I can look through the rear sight, through the optic, and see the front sight. So I can make my adjustments and everything and my red dot to get it online with my, my sights. The rear sight is an RPK adjustable rear sight for windage. I will roll this so you can see what I'm talking about. So as you can see right here, I can pull this lever out and I can turn it to adjust the windage left or right of my rear sight. Of course, the uh, elevation would be push and slide, raising the rear sight uh, as you progress up the, the numbers. So I just pull all the way back down to zero. Everything is back. Everything co-witnesses right through the sights, no problem. I'll show you a picture right here. All right, so now Midwest Industries makes this rail system, which has to be installed uh, very carefully from the perspective of making sure that you keep it level. So when you have your weapon inside your vise, you wanna make sure that you have it level. And then whenever you put the rail system and everything on, you want to ensure that it is level as well. So it keeps your optic uh, level all the way across the board. But once that's installed, everything else attaches with screws on the side and it provides you a rail on one side 
uh, at three, nine, and six o'clock. And then it comes with very specific um, optic manufacturer ma mounts for the top of it that you can swap this out to a different red dot optic if you wanted. I can get a rail replacement by repl replacing these two screws with a replacement top, and I can put a uh, aim point or other red dot up on top. I have night armament rail covers on here on both sides. I have a Magpul Industries angle foregrip here. Uh, the angle foregrip that people put on their weapons, they have a tendency to think about them as a grip when they're not so much really to be used as a grip, but more as a reference point whenever you're holding the firearm because the if you go to the same point every time whenever you grab the front of your weapon for stability, you're going to get more accuracy if you can repeat repeatedly grab the same point every time. So this is more of a reference point, not so much something to hold on for dear life uh, on your weapon like some people have a tendency to do with pistol grips on the front of their weapons. I'm also not a fan on AK weapon systems of vertical pistol grips unless they're the stubbies because the way this weapon systems magazine interface is, is it's a rock and lock. So as you can see, you grab your magazine, pull your magazine release forward with your thumb and the magazine rocks out of the weapon. And as you can see, having a grip right here could be a problem. So the angle foregrip gives you the ability to have a consistent reference point on the front of your weapon while still being able to lock your magazines into place without any issues. Okay, I also have a Phantom muzzle brake up here that is a little bit better in my opinion. It also has a impact bezel uh, on the front. It's kind of scalped where you can strike with that. Uh, you just push this little pin. In right here, which is a retaining pin, and this whole piece screws off and you can replace the angle one that it comes with with this aftermarket. There are a lot of different aftermarket muzzle brakes that you can get. Just ensure that you actually get the right thread pattern uh, for your weapon. Now this is a um, bayonet lug. If you want to have a bayonet, you can put the bayonet on there. Some of the original AKs come with a installed bayonet, which is a hinged blade, or uh, they had just a blade, and then they had a cruciform blade, which is like a three-edged kind of spike, and it would be uh, on the weapon and just stored out of way uh, until you needed it. Then you would pivot it up, and it would lock into place right there underneath the muzzle. Um, this one here is set up for a removable magazine, or as your removable uh, bayonet, like you would end up having like for your M16 or your AR-15 uh, type rifle. Um, moving on towards a little bit further back, you'll see that, oh my God, someone has taken off my charging handle. However, am I going to charge my weapon when I have no charging handle? Actually, we have a charging handle on here. What we have is we have the installed version from Colorado Shooting Sports. Uh, shout out to Anthony Navarro out there at Colorado Shooting Sports. Thanks again for your outstanding customer service and your videos. Check them out. They have a lot of options uh, for you to use uh, for your weapons. Uh, they also make this, which is what's called the AK Lightning uh, Bolt um, Lightning Lever. And what it does is you literally take everything off your weapon, take everything out. This rotates up to put your weapon into safe, down to have your weapon into fire, as you can see, S and F. On a traditional AK with your charging handle, this will allow you to lock the charging handle back by having the safety on. Uh, you can actuate this with your finger to actually in, dis, uh, disengage the safety. The thing I like about having this as an, an option is to have it where I can flip it off with my figure, finger instead of just reaching up here and shutting it off, turning it off and on up there. Um, sometimes with AKs, uh, the way the safety system works is once you go to take the safety, flip the safety off of your weapon, um, everybody within like a six block radius knows you've just taken the safety off of an AK because they're rather loud and clunky. So this one here, you just reach up and just push it down with your trigger finger and hey, you rock and roll. I'm gonna put it back up, just lift up, and you're good to go there. To replace the one on your weapon, if this is removed and everything's taken out, you rotate this up, so it's straight up and down from here and it comes right out of your gun. You put the replacement one right back in and it latches back down into position. So real easy to, to swap out. 
So uh, almost all AKs eject on the right hand side. So they would, that's why they put the charging handle on the right hand side. This weapon was originally designed for a conscript military. Okay, so we're gonna roll the weapon now. I'm going to show you, because this is what I was talking about. This is a standard AK uh, charge, uh, carrying bolt, uh, bolt carrier. The bolt actually fits inside here, so you can just take it out. And it's just a drop-in replacement from Colorado Shooting Sports. What it does is it moves your charging handle onto the left-hand side, and they take a machine out this portion right here so that the charging handle on the left-hand side is uh, not obstructed. So we're going to roll it over. And you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. So now we can see the AK lightning bolt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the magazine out, move it out of the way, and we'll pull the charging handle back. As you can see, it makes it a lot easier for uh, right-handed shooters because you keep your hand on fire control and use your left hand or your off hand to load your magazines and to actuate the bolt. The good thing about this is that with the charging handle on the left hand side, while the safety is still engaged, I can load and unload the weapon. When the safety is engaged, you cannot load or unload your AK-47 weapon platform. Additionally, if a weapon goes uh, to feed around and it doesn't go into battery, you can use the blade of your hand as a forward assist to move it forward. So. As you can see, I've got quick detach uh, sling swivels here and here on this Magpul Zukov stock. It is a side folding stock. What you do is you will push this button and the stock folds to the right hand side. And so now, as you can see, with this charging handle on the left hand side, this right folding uh, buttstock doesn't interfere either with the ejection of the cartridges or the manipulation of the bolt. So it makes it much more uh, convenient for right-handed shooters. Now I'm sure you could end up getting one that folds to the left-hand side uh, and leave your charging handle the way it originally was if you wanted to end up doing that. Uh, Colorado Shooting Sports has a generation two lightning bolt, which has the original lightning, the original charging handle where it was and they add another one to the left-hand side so that you can have both of them, so you can charge from either side, which make it a more ambidextrous firearm. However, you won't be able to load or unload the weapon with the safety engaged because that safety blocks uh, the charging handle from going all the way to the rear. So uh, the stock is also adjustable. So you pull down here and it is stiff. But you pull down and it adjusts for length of pull so that you can actually, if you're a taller person, you have longer arms, you can actually make it a little bit easier to reach. And as you can see, it just locks everything back into place. Rubber buffer pad here, so it makes it comfortable to shoot. You can also get additional swing swivels to put here, sling mount right here, and it has a detent, so it doesn't move around once it's folded. But to open it back up, just flip it, and it locks nice and tight. So just to give you an idea how this weapon system ends up working on the inside, so we can turn the safety off, clear to make sure the weapon is clear. Push this back here in, and you'll lift the dust cover completely off. As you will see, it's got the machine cut for the bolt. I'm gonna move these out of the way. Those are the originals. And then as you'll see, this rubber bumper pad right here is a buffer that you can get for your AK weapon platform. When the bolt travels to the rear, as you can see, now we have the dust cover off, it will slam into the frame of your gun where the trunnion mounts into the receiver. Uh, that will beat your shoulder up. On top of, it will beat the gun up because you have metal to metal contact. And so putting this little piece of rubber in there stops it from having metal to metal, metal contact and makes shooting this much, much more comfortable. Now to take this out, you simply push this recoil spring guide for, front, uh, forward, lift it up, and the recoil spring comes right out of your weapon. It's a two-part with this, uh, with rod, but it's actually two little loop springs. Uh, uh, like I don't know what you would call them springs, but uh, they're oval-shaped little pieces of metal, and it has the spring goes over the outside and it's captured here with this thing here with the lips of the, uh, the, the extension. 
So as you can see, you can take that apart. You pull pressure on your pressure on your spring, pull this down, and then take this, just twist it out, and you can take the entire spring assembly apart if you wanted to, to install this or change to a coil spring, uh, different other types of recoil springs that are out there uh, available to you. Now when you take the bolt out and then charge the charging handle, just pull back and then you lift up and the entire bolt carrier comes right out of the AK. As you can see, this is much bigger than an AR-15 uh, bolt. So that's something to consider whenever you're shooting AR-15s in Russian military surplus calibers is this is a big bolt. So it's gonna be hot ammunition. So you're gonna use a heavier buffer in your AR-15 platform to slow your uh, bolt carrier down so you don't get bolt bounce. So to take your bolt out of your uh, bolt carrier, you just roll it, it, comes right out. Okay, to reinstall it, it goes right back in here and you just roll it and then it follows the track for the rotation. To reinstall it in your firearm, you just pick your weapon up, go through the gas tube. There's little notches on both sides. You wanna sit that in there and then just push her forward. There you go, your bolt is installed. Take your recoil spring, goes right into the back of the bolt. Then you're going to slide it all the way forward, down until it fits inside the notch, making sure everything is aligned. You're gonna take your dust cover. There's a little lip right above that. You're gonna put that in there. You reach over here, you push it down. And everything should pop right into position. There you go. Now I reach over to do a function check. Okay, we know the weapon's clear, trigger, we know it fires, cycle it again, and there you go. So as you can see, here's the Zukov S stock by Magpul. This is what it looks like, how the box it comes in. You're offered in black uh, FDE, which is tan, and then they have uh, a plum colored one, which for some reason, there's a lot of plum colored uh, magazines out there for the AKs. Um, they want to match your stock with your uh, magazines. Uh, there you go. There are a lot of other different side folding stocks that are out there, collapsible stocks. Some of these weapon platforms will come here with a hole cut out and they will have an underfold stock. Uh, my friend Steve has one of those uh, and loves it. So uh, it doesn't provi uh, provide quite as good of a cheek weld as this does. Uh, in my opinion, I've uh, been a big fan of the side folding stock on the AKs. And for some reason over in, AK, uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq, one of the things that the Iraqis and the Afghanis like to do is when they have an AK-47, they like completely removing the stock to use it as a truck gun. So once they end up doing that, it becomes not as easy to aim, uh, which is why um, you don't really hear about too many Iraqi or Afghani snipers with uh, D butt stocked AK-47s. But anyway, so uh, a lot of options that you can actually go out there and do with your uh, weapon. It just depends on what you want to end up doing. There are lots of different manufacturers for front end rails. Again, this is a Midwest Industries. I love it. And like I said, Colorado Shooting Sports makes a lot of accessories for the AK-47 weapon platform. There are a lot of different aftermarket stocks, uh, fold left or right or, or fixed. They also have a lot of different types of muzzle brakes. The, the rear sights, like I said, this is a uh, RPK, adjustable rear sight for windage and, and elevation. So that way I can actually make sure that everything is aligned correctly. Because whenever you uh, adjust the sights on an AK-47, the rear are fixed except for elevation. So you'd make all your adjustments with a push pull, uh, pull tool up here. Uh, leaving this a fix that's not really easily adjustable. Having this back here easily adjustable, just more convenient for me. I don't have to have an additional tool when I go out to the range to get it zeroed uh, at different ranges. So, like I said, there are a lot of different uh, options and everything out there for you to upgrade your weapon platform. Do your research. I will put some suggested sites in the uh, description and happy shooting. Get out, get some trigger time. Make sure you hit the subscribe button right down there on the bottom and put any questions in the remarks in the question or the comment section. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And thanks for watching another episode of Damn It Jim's Gun Info.